Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining me in the video today. Now, one of the most frequently asked questions I get on my videos is how do I make keys for instruments? And that's a very good question. What I tend to do is I try to take keys from instruments that already exist, generally instruments that are broken, that are no longer fixable, and I will take those keys and I will actually install them on my homemade instruments using the same post and by making tone holes out of various sizes of tubing. So I want to show this process from start to finish so that you guys know how to build keys for your own instruments. So today I'm going to be installing a C sharp G sharp key on my Octo Contra Alto clarinet. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first thing that you need to do when designing keys for your home and instrument is you need to have a plan in mind and you need to have a way to execute it. So what I wanna do is I wanna make something similar to this articulated C-sharp, G-sharp key, where the pad cup is on the front for better projection and this touch piece lifts up the pad cup. So what I need to do is I need to figure out what I can reuse to make this key. What I found was this bass clarinet key, which sort of works like a larger version of this pad cup, where I have a little notch here that I can use to lift it up. So now all I need is a touch piece. So you have to be a little bit creative when you're designing keys for your instrument. So what I did was I found this F sharp, C sharp key that was bent from a damage from the instrument it was previously on. So it's no good for a key on a B flat clarinet, but it'll actually work pretty good for a key on this instrument because it just about fits right where it needs to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut a little notch out like that so there's something to lift that key and then I'm gonna cut this touch piece off and that'll create my key so you kind of see that you need to mock it up and design it in your head and figure out how it's gonna work before you can install it on the instrument so now that we've selected the parts that we're going to use for our keys we need to figure out the posts so generally I like to reuse posts from instruments just because they're readily available and they're pretty easy to install so what I've done is I found one post with just a straight hole to fit a rod and another post with a threaded hole so that I can thread the rod into. And this one also has a spring to articulate the key. So now that I've found the post that I need and a rod that works, I can figure out where I want to put it on the instrument and just drill the holes where they need to be. And being careful to measure to make sure that the key isn't going to be too tight or too loose. Eventually I also have to cut this rod down because it's a bit too long for this key, but that's fairly easy to do. So let's get this key installed. All right, so I have the holes drilled for the post. I should mention that I generally use an eighth inch bit when installing posts into PVC pipe. And you wanna go all the way through the pipe because the threaded section of the post is longer than the PVC pipe is thick. But that's not gonna be a problem because we're gonna use a bit of super glue to seal the threads so that there's no leak at these two holes. Now I should also mention that the measurements for the location of the tone hole were taken off a contrabass clarinet. Um, I unfortunately don't have any good calculations to use for calculating the location of tone holes for humming instruments. Now, uh, let's get this key installed and let's see how it looks. Okay, so that key is now installed. Now I should mention that I generally like to install the keys before I make the tone holes, just because I find that it's easier to find the center of where the key is gonna be and use that to find the center of the tone hole. So 
now that the key's installed, let me cut off this section right here and then cut this key to shape. And then I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm just gonna install posts on this key. And then the whole mechanism should be working properly. All right, so this key is looking pretty good. So now we gotta make the tone hole of the instrument. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to drill a hole below the pad cup, and I'm going to make a tone hole insert like this out of some PVC pipe. So once that's done, I can then glue that in, level it, and then get this pad sealed, and then the key should be pretty much done, aside from a few final finishing touches. So without further ado, let's get started on that. All right, so the hole is cut and the tone hole insert is installed. So now all I have to do is level it against the pad that's on this key to make sure the pad is gonna seal nice and tight. And then we're just gonna glue it in place and that'll pretty much be it. All right, and the last step is to just do some general cleanup and install the finishing touches. So I put on a few bumpers and a Teflon slider to make the key action nice and smooth. And I've also installed a custom neoprene pad. So this is all good to go. So let's put it on the instrument and see how it sounds. Alright everyone, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I taught you a little bit about how I build keys for my homemade instruments. The purpose of this video is to show you that it's actually not that hard to reuse keys from other instruments to make keys for your own homemade instruments. So my hope is that some of you will try this and will try to make your own homemade instruments because it's a really fun hobby and it's a really great way to get a unique and interesting instrument and you can say that you actually built this from scratch so i think that's really cool so thank you for watching and have a wonderful day all right so i'm sure somebody's going to ask in the comments what's up with the octo contra bass clarinet so i just wanted to give this quick update to explain some of the problems i've had in having with this instrument the first is i just don't really know how i'm going to design some of the keys so that's kind of added some delays to the project and the second is I'm getting some weird acoustical phenomena with this instrument. And I think that's related to the fact that the bore of the instrument is 40 millimeters, where the mouthpiece is really designed for nothing bigger than an instrument with a bore of 35 millimeters. So let me just show you what is happening. So you can kind of hear you're getting like undertones in the, in the sound of the instrument. And that's not really good at all. It, it really makes it hard to play even simple melodies on this instrument. And I, as of now, I really haven't figured out a way around it, unfortunately. So I don't think that I'm going to be able to make a successful instrument out of this prototype. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to start from scratch, maybe with slightly smaller diameter tubing. Although I think I can reuse most of the keys, so that would save me a little bit of time. But as of right now, my plan is to finish the Octo Contra Alto Clarinet and then use what I've learned from that instrument to build a better octo contra bass clarinet. So I know this is gonna be disappointing news for a lot of you and I apologize for that, but this is very much a trial and error process. So through many prototypes and a lot of work, I hope one day I will have a good functioning octo contra bass clarinet. 
So sorry to bring the bad news to everybody.